3 n uh, in terms of the radiance from uh, rain. Uh, the context analysis will say yes throughout, and the reason for this is that the resilience framework was provided at the beginning, right out from the beginning. So it gave guidance to the to the RI, uh, RI labs to ensure that they, they do context analysis very well. Uh, in the protocol, it's also yes, yes, because the protocol has standardized and it's included all the components that are needed to evolve uh, the protocol. Uh, when it came to data correction tools, process and guidance, it was no here, and because of this no, it affected the rest of the of the sections and the reason that was given was that this was kind of a, a generic tool and therefore needed there was need for flexibility to ensure that the context specific issues are, are, required, are captured within the tool so that's why here it, it became a not route and in terms of data processing the team told that this was part of data analysis so for, for this case, it's not, not applicable, but it's incorporated within the data analysis. It's part of data analysis. And so with data analysis, yes, the guidance was very relevant, but at the same time not effective. Uh, in terms of best practice, there are some issues that we have raised, and one of them was that the guidance attempted to move from qualitative to quantitative. That was one. Then two, that the application of the code concurrence, yes, it's very, it's a good practice, but the way it was uh, provided was not in the usual and best practice, though it is applicable in the qualitative data analysis. And then also, the dimension description kept on changing, so it was not consistent throughout uh, the process. Uh, on the overall process, the score three. Uh, the group uh, scored three out of five. Uh, how we can strengthen the process? We chose this process as very key and very important because of its link. First of all, the process has a very link uh, with innovations, and also the final product would also inform the whole process of run. So it's very important that this process is looked into and improved and actually suggest that we need to go back into the data big deep and understand it more so as to get more innovations that are linked to the data. Uh, we, we need to engage the protective data analysis experts. We also need an extensive and a clear data analysis plan was needed within the protocol so that it is a plan before looking at the tools that we, we have. Then also flexibility in the use of the software to do the analysis. So there, there was need for flexibility and probably use other ways to do the analysis rather than uh, sticking on the software alone. The target stakeholders, students, faculty, the program coordinators, the lab, the lab directors, innovation officers, and m and officers, they are very key because they are custodians of the data at the lab level and therefore need to understand what is going on. Uh, in terms of uh, the science uh, dimensions, well, it came out as the most silent dimension for this group in the three contexts, and uh, it was mentioned as an outcome. And why this is very silent was that there is need for alternative livelihoods, and therefore it should be considered as very, very important. The, lab, the labs have the capacity, run as the lab has the capacity to address this, because partly we have the resources that are available and we can also leverage on the network to mobilize more resources for, for the world uh, Then maybe the most contextual uh, bit of it was on the governance for Northern Uganda. Yes, it is an underlying factor. It came out as very, very important in that after this long conflict, 20 years, people went back to their homes, but the issue of land now okay, people could not visit, uh, identify the boundaries of their land and therefore it is generating another conflict within the region and therefore it requires a lot of uh, no care in terms of handling. But the run is not able to handle this because this is politically motivated and therefore requires a lot of governance uh, in this. But also most important for South Africa was human capital and social networks which are one is a media cause, the other one is a supporting environment. 
But for the social, for the human uh, capital, the most important thing was that for South Africa, this human capital in an HIV uh, prone environment, if the community is most affected by HIV, it uh, affects the human capital directly, and therefore the community may not be productive. And also it has a direct link with wealth, because if people are not productive, they cannot even engage into productive work, and therefore it is very deep and the realm thought, yes, the issue of human capital can be handled. Uh, also, of course, on human capital, what was I uh, discussed here is that it is needed in that for life good diversification, you need to invest in human capital so that people have skills to ensure that they can diversify their life goods. Yeah, thank you so much.